the radial dynamics vortex reservoir is gonna spin the fluid and separate the air from the fluid in the same way that Stomper separates my blood cells from a plasma. <laughs> Science! Give this performance, we built a Japanese mini truck on a C5 Corvette chassis. It's got a six liter LS engine. We've got a two liter blower on it. And we're about to drive this from New Hampshire, 1800 miles, all the way to Dallas for LS Fest, Texas. The Great American Mini Truck Trip. At this point, nothing could go wrong. Oh, and now we're dead, we died. Sick. I don't know if it's fixed, but it's got more fluid in it. Yeah, you going, you riding shotgun? No. Are you a freaking idiot? <laughs> well, wait, well yes. Run. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Go on. <laughs> yeah. Go on, brand here. I'm Joshua Maserol, allowing vague industries, and my show Death Wish is where expert level fabricators use their skill set to manifest jaw dropping creations. My crew and I are on a mission using eye catching stunts and machines to expose the kindness of strangers in America. In typical Death Wish fashion, for the past week, we've gotten minimal to no sleep. Last night, got an hour and a half sleep. We are supposed to leave at 7.30 in the morning. It's like two o'clock in the afternoon, so we're late as usual. And we're gonna tow Stomper. So we are technically gonna have a chase vehicle, but we're gonna try to use it as little as possible to maintain the spirit of the adventure. Believe it or not, Stomper was actually done on time. It was this truck that we stayed up all night working on and uh, all kinds of bugs and quirks and we're still not 100% certain that it's gonna run right but at this point like we're out of time we're gonna blow it up or we're not we're just gonna go just as we're getting ready to roll out our resident scientist shows up Derek hi thank you how are you you're welcome uh, we'll we'll do it better now do. you're here all right we'll see what we can do maybe a little more personal for the kids what are you seeing uh, not a whole lot we're not exactly 100% sure what the injectors are. We think they're 72s, right? Yeah. So we're gonna do a little bit of street tuning as we go. Derek is gonna follow us. The Great American Mini Truck Trip. Transmission lost all command, so it's stuck in second gear. Uh, Derek is following us, and we just gave him the laptop. He's gonna sit in his car and go try to figure something out. But um, I don't know, we might be going to Texas in second gear. Yeah. Well, that changes our deadline. It's better than first. That's definitely better <laughs> than first. Can we default to third? I heard that. I heard Ish. it shift. For a while we were stuck in first. That was interesting. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, like a three week trip it, to Texas. It was like a moped. <laughs> you got any science to report? You guys always do this to me. Yeah. <laughs> always. Sorry, we never show anybody else the hackery you do behind the I scenes. appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Josh. This is part. Then we're going to have eight cylinders. So far, I haven't seen a, a wheel speed over 13 miles an hour. 
So I just scaled all the shift parameters back so we have all four gears. Instead of trying to figure out, instead of diagnose, we're Yeah, we don't have time to diagnose. Yeah, okay. So we're just gonna band-aid around the problem. Hell yeah. Perfect. Gauze pad. <laughs> Stitches. This is a gash. Yeah, it's a massive gash. So this coil pack is garbage. Can't even get good free things on the Silverado. Where's the, where's the coil? What'd you do with it? What'd you do with it? <laughs> That's so we had a bad coil that was on that side. And unfortunately, the wide band is on that side. So it's making the whole thing drive like wide open. So now we swapped to this side to see if it worked better. It didn't work any better, but at least it didn't confuse the wide band. So now hopefully I have eight, all eight cylinders. We got a race car now, baby. 18 miles down. One breakdown repaired. Back on eight cylinders. Let's hit the road, John. Like two. Let's <laughs> hit it. Off like a herd of turtles. first stop that I would say is not a breakdown yeah. we're just topping off Dude, I love that this is like the whole side of a truck just welded into the floor of your bed legroom's not awesome in this thing like at all <laughs> but it honestly rides awesome like way less sketchy than stomper we got to be nice to it because we don't want to mess up the transmission melt the motor because like really should get it on a dyno and really get go through it but we just don't have time for that Time to get on the road. At this point, nothing could go wrong. So we put this nifty gauge in here that we found in a dead Silverado. Unfortunately, we just filled up, so a third of a tank is full. And when it stops moving past F, it's half full. Good, so, perfect. And after that, you're on your own. <laughs> little mini truck gave me COVID. I got my NyQuil and uh, we're thinking that the plugs are fouled and it's getting terrible fuel mileage. It's pinging. It's not doing so hot so we're gonna grab some plugs. I don't know if we're gonna swap it out now but we have a couple more hours of driving before we stop. We're gonna crash. Full day of driving tomorrow because we're gonna stop at Hot Rod Power Tour. We're gonna do day two of Hot Rod Power Tour which is from Nashville to somewhere in Alabama. I'm stoked. Well, that's probably why it's been whining. Our steering is pretty low. You said and something dumb about the rack? Yeah, it's a Corvette rack. We had to flip it upside down to get the steering shaft to go forward because of the stupid key truck thing. <laughs> and, uh, so the vent line's being upside down. It really doesn't like it, so it's kind of pushing fluid out across the seals a little bit. But I mean, truthfully... Well, we got a couple hundred miles on it so far. And, yeah, that. Exactly. And we actually had quite a few miles on it before we put the supercharger on, so... Yeah, I would I'll say... top it off and uh, go again. That's not that bad. Cool. Yeah, I think I'll grab some spark plugs on there too. Cool. I'm gonna ride in the tow vehicle. Okay. I'm feeling pretty useless. <laughs> more than normal. Yeah, more than normal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. Cool, man. See you at the next stop. Perfect. Do the plugs while it's still cold. Yeah, I'll probably try to get over here as quick as possible. Then we gotta try and find something to tighten those lines because we're cranking through power steering fluid in a it's reservoir tough. every 50 miles. What? I'd like to know why this thing basically forgets everything it learns every time you turn the key on. Yeah. Like so, yesterday we drove 200 miles. So the next two legs we did, no fourth gear. Like wasn't home. Huh. Like it started when I left there, it started out in second gear at the stoplight. Yeah. Shifted to third, wouldn't shift up into fourth. 
we literally across the Maryland line, hit a bump, thing shifted into fourth. <laughs> so it wouldn't, like it wouldn't command it into fourth for like 200 miles. Wow. So. <clears throat> Interesting. So we gotta get these down to at least 25,000 because of supercharged. Tighten that gap up. What heat range should we go with? Whatever a 2008 Silverado has. What? We gotta do colder, go up. Colder plugs. We're gonna run 10 pounds of boost. Don't tell me what to do. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm along for the ride. We have nine and a half hours to drive. If You're nothing perfect. goes right, and we don't have to stop every 90 miles for fuel. Right. Every fuel stop costs us 20 minutes. At least. So that adds another two hours and 40 minutes on our drive. Yep. So we're close to... 12 hours. 12 hours without lunch or anything else. Right. Um, which puts us at 10, 11 o'clock at night getting into Nashville tomorrow night. Midnight. Midnight. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So my thought would be to actually fix the shit we can fix here, load it on a trailer, run two fuel stops in a truck, bang out, you know, four or 500 miles real quick, because it looks like it's gonna be miserable. And then continue on from there. That should put us back on track. That should, that basically cuts almost two hours off our travel time, because yep. we're only stopping for fuel once. Josh, why are you on the ground? Because this truck gave me COVID and I feel like death. I'm a little bit bummed that we towed both trucks all day today, but it was literally the only way we were gonna make it to Nashville for the day two of Hot Rod Power Tour. Um, but now we're here, we're unloaded. I didn't plan on driving Stomper around today, but okay, we're gonna go get some food. There's no hotel rooms available within 50 miles. And uh, just make yourself vulnerable to the experience and the kindness of a stranger reached out, not even part of Hot Rod Power Tour, just happens to be in town on business, says, no way, you're here. You can crash at my hotel, so we're gonna not sleep on the grass like I initially intended. We're gonna get a hot shower and a nice warm bed, and then wake up nice and early to get on the road. Well, I think I'm actually gonna put some real miles on, on Stomper in the morning. So because I've got the front diff welded, the front drive shaft spins all the time, and it's an inch and three quarter solid drive shaft that I've made myself on the bench, so it doesn't like doing more than 40 miles an hour. So we're gonna pull it out, so the drive shaft's not always spinning at highway speed, if we even make it to highway speed. Oh, this thing's heavy. So I'm actually gonna be locking out the steering for safety reasons, and then disconnecting the steering motor so it just absolutely can't. You know what? The steering lockout? It's not lined work. up. No, it doesn't work yet. It's not lined up. Oh boy. So I'm not going to be locking out the steering um, for safety reasons. We're just going to send it. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't get a harebrained idea and send us off the cliff. Power tour is supposed to be starting like right now, so we got a big great change of plans because the tow rig needs a wheel bearing. Like desperately. Can't go anywhere. So I'm going to steal Giffen's and I'm just gonna get on the road and try to meet up with the train of cars and um, he'll catch up wherever I break down. All right, you wanna be navigator? Sure. That includes telling me when to take turns. Okay. Okay.
sick. 242, 243, it's just climbing. It's hot. Awesome. I wonder where it's actually dripping from because, oh, you know what? The overflow. Because it's not coming out of this cap. I can't really tell where the coolant's coming from. It's at 241 right now. I'm going to fire it up just to circulate a little bit of coolant for the block. I think we just go and we just won't push it as hard. We'll just go slower. I can only imagine that's what did it. Trying to keep up with the hot rodders that have overdrive. Do you think we still have enough fluid for the... Yeah, I guess so. I mean, we'll just it. Let's go. We're getting the slow lane. This isn't too bad. As far as like, it's 205 right now. It's maintaining. We just can't do 80 miles an hour. It doesn't have enough airflow under the cab into the radiator. Out of fuel, you want to find a gas station? Working on it. It's got an LS. It's got an LS. Look at the motor. Look at him, look at him, look at the motor. This thing's got to fly. Yeah. Not too bad. First stop, we sort of went off route on uh, the, the suggested power tour route, but uh, we got probably two more gas stops before we're there. As long as nothing else goes wrong, and I'm sure. How do I drive this thing? Okay, so this is not a three speed. This is actually a column shifter out of a Silverado. So you have over, reverse, neutral, drive. Key's already on, and then this is the start button. And because we don't have a great tune in it, you gotta kinda keep it running with your foot. So go ahead, fire it up. This is why it overheats, because it's sucking through a straw. The radiator's somewhere up in there. Is that all it is? You ran out of gas? Yeah, we're, we're trying to make it to the E85 station. 
close, so we gotta oh, try luck. to plan it out, getting it close. We're, so. we're like three we're miles away, close. but we're like, we're gonna go as far as we can. That's super cool. We just ran off and we got 15 gallons. Sick. Good, well that's an easy fix. Yep. That was the easiest repair ever. I got a V8 Camry just like this. It doesn't idle very well. It's got major transmission problems. Um, and I think the major problem is that the reluctor wheel isn't on the output shaft, it's on the ring gear. And we don't have the right pulse per mile. Um, I think it's a 48, two, I'd have to look it up. But um, So it, when we're doing like 70, it thinks we're doing 15. So. Uh, well, while we were on our way out, my buddy just sort of stopped and he was like, well, this isn't right, but it will get you into overdrive. So he just like, you know, shift at five miles an hour, shift at eight miles an hour, shift that way there, at least it's in overdrive, but we can't use it. And it does all kinds of funny things. And I'm sure that it's simple, but I'm, I just don't know. I can't imagine. Cause like, it's we get it fired up. If I keep it running two foot it for a little bit and then it learns how to idle and then it's fine. But if I shut it off and start it back up, it has to redo it all over again. So it's like, why did we even do it? Uh, I opened up the drive by wire. So basically the throttle blade, it's got a drive by wire unit on it. Uh, in this case, the throttle, the minimum blade was like 8% TPS. It's too, too far closed to, to idle happily. Um, so I opened it up some and it seems to help. So we're, we're at least going a direction that it's favoring a little bit. But there's some other stuff that's going on too. It's got some sensor issues and maybe some electrical noise. Your IAT sensor was going crazy. Uh, and there was IAT correction parameters in there for the fueling. Um, so basically I, I just took that whole table and just made it a hundred so it doesn't correct if it, if it because it's, it's seeing a huge swing in the, yeah. the IAT. So that's bad data so we can't use that. So. I was seeing huge like erratic movements in the air fuel. Okay. Hey, what are you doing? Getting ready to pull a spark plug out. You just sort of came out of nowhere and you saw there was a problem and you just wanted to help. Well, actually, the guy that was tuning, Derek, I yep. know Derek from back home. Oh, okay, it's a small so, world then. Yeah, he was gonna hook to my car and do some tuning on it. Sweet, so, so help him, help you, like, yeah, he, help everybody achieve their goals. Exactly. This is awesome. Sick. What's your name? Scott Smith. Scott Smith, thank you very much. So cylinder number eight's not firing. We just swapped the plug out. I guess we could always swap a coil and see if it's a that's coil. Like that's right. pretty simple. Yeah. yeah, we moved this plug up to the next coil and found that this coil pack's bad. Okay, so it's just a coil pack. Yeah. Awesome. We had a dead coil pack on the way down here, so prob they'll probably all drop by the time we get to Texas. Right. You know, they probably pick up some spares. They wear in pairs. <laughs> <laughs> they wear oh, right there. There's your problem. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, it's cracked through there. Cool, they're probably all like that or on their way to be like that. Like, like, like all of us, it's got oh, the yeah. Look here. Oh yeah. They're all going out. Yeah, this one's great. Look at the crack there. Cool. There. Sweet. Oh yeah? Watched all the shows and stuff. How you doing, buddy? Good, good. What were you driving? That Super D right there. Oh, so, oh yeah, yeah. I was right behind you. Yeah. Yeah. But the, I was like, I don't want to get too close to that like actually nice car with this pilot crowd. <laughs> you know, I was watching some of the build dude and things great. Yeah. Yeah, we need eight coil packs. Oh, uh, pretty much. Yeah. Do you? No. Sh I was just getting on here to say we need eight coil packs, but he's got them. This is great. I love how the universe works. <laughs> so, I don't even know this guy's name yet, but he just gave us some coil packs. A whole bunch of them. We have a whole box of these things. What's your name? Jason. Jason. Josh. Yeah, Thank Jason. you very much. Yep. I brought them with. I figured somebody's going to need them. Yeah. Just happened to run into the guy who needs all of them. Yep. I, brought out we, so <laughs> I was like right coil. behind you this morning. When you whipped in behind him and the Super yep. B, I was in the Super Sport behind you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How's it going? Perfect. Got a set of free coils, 8,000 miles on them. We can't use them. Why? Because this connector right here, wrong connector. What is... What, those are LS1 coils. That's LS1. And, and these are Trailblazer SS. Okay, is the Trailblazer SS going to be the same as the truck? 
I have no idea. They don't look like it. Okay. So if we had the rack that those came on, we could use them. Because that would have the, the coil harness. Right. Got it. We need the harness too, yeah. Okay, well, back to the mission. Yeah. Thanks for nothing, Jason. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. I try. <laughs> All right, new plan. Since we're not driving Stomper, and we're trying to drive uh, the Corvette truck, we're gonna rob the coil rack off of Stomper and put Stomper on the trailer, and then we'll use the Stomper's uh, coil racks on the Corvette truck to continue driving to our next stop. And in the meantime, we can try to find some coil packs. This is definitely gonna work. There's no reason why it won't work. So with that, Hot Rod Boomer Tour is a wrap. It runs now. Now it's got stopper's coils on it. It runs good. Holly went through, went and tuned it. They said that it's still gonna be funny because we didn't have time and resources to put a, like, a lot of effort into it. Yeah. Uh, so it's gotta relearn some, but it should be a lot better. It sounds better, it idles. Um, so now we gotta go catch up with Stomper and Giffen in the tow rig. Looking a little ominous. And uh, I have no idea if this thing has wipers that work uh, or how watertight this is. So it'll be interesting to see um, what happens with that. So what do we got here? This, this is, is the oil sending unit. Oil sending unit. Yes. And oh, there's a Home Depot right down the street. So you got a broken fitting and it's gonna rain any second. So we I got, got a, I got a little pipe. All right, let's boogie, man. The whole hot rod community is so cool. You know, like everybody's got an awesome story. Everybody's building something. Yeah, I'm old. I'm 73 years old. Yeah, you got a lot of history in this game. Is that that? That's the piece. Yeah. That's that. Yeah, but now we got to figure out a way to get you have the other we piece. Got, we got to get this mail there. We got to get this little piece out. Or yeah, or a new one. Yeah, good thinking. So we got all the pipe fittings to fix the oil leak, but is that all this is? Is you've got a you've got an oil leak now that we got the parts to fix that. Does it run after this, or is that just incidental and we don't know how to I make it run? I have I broke this getting the fuel pump off. Oh, so we don't even know if this runs yet. No. Sweet. All right, what an adventure. I'm in. Count me in. I'm here till it's done. Oh, Home Depot. Look at there. They're pipe fittings. You are. This is so cool. Playing hot rods with my new friends. <laughs> <laughs> Got an important job. Yeah, hold that, don't lose it. Gotta hold this, don't lose it. We're gonna have this man tow us to the hotel and I can finish it up in the morning, I'm pressure. Okay. Hey. Thank you. Okay. Love you. Love you too, man. Take care. Good luck. You're godsend. Just like, you know. Nice Thank you, buddy. Be safe. Have, a, have fun, young lady. Thank you. Awesome. He's, Good he's luck. doing that mechanic, and I think yeah, that's okay. gonna that's, that's what's gonna set you off on your young life. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it was a beautiful experience. Yeah. Hope you guys get it back together at the hotel. Uh, thank you very much for that. Yeah. Yeah. God have a good day. Awesome. Let's get out of here. It's the end of this day. We made it to the Airbnb. Tomorrow there's like 650 miles to get to Dallas. So that's gonna be a long ass day in this thing. Hopefully we'll split some driving duties with the other guys. Okay, Giffen doesn't believe that we can make it to Dallas in the same amount of time in this mini truck as he can with the truck and trailer. And uh, so we got a head start on them, and we're trying to stay ahead. Oh yeah. Which means we got to make the fastest fuel stops known to the history of man. Right now we're at 16 miles ahead of Giffen. 
Got it. Okay, so I don't have a jack and I don't have tools to pull the plug. And it's not happy. It's it's like the train is grumpy and I, it's acting like it's low on fluid and I don't want to keep driving it like that. Yeah, we don't have any tools at all. Oh, it sucks for you. I guess you're going to lose a challenge. Yeah. Well, it looks like I probably got a half hour to try to figure this out, but that's yeah, yeah. half hour goes quick when you broke down. Yeah, we just checked you were 40 minutes, uh, 40 miles ahead of us. Yeah. All right. Well, you'll see me, I guess. Look at me broke down over here now. Three and a half miles up, there's another exit. Advanced Auto Parts is right there. So we're gonna just idle all the way there. You said your side's pissing gas? Oh yeah. Oh man, that tranny fluid is black. That's not good. That, we might not have a fill problem. The other scary thing is we gotta check this thing while it's in gear. Well, it's all up on this and I'm under it. Yeah, this is like a recipe for death. Were you able to find anything definitive on the gas leak? No, I was gonna say uh, prime the pump again. I'll check it out. Oh, it's something into the fuel cap. Oh, okay. There's the returns right there. Okay. So it's just too full right now. Perfect. That's easy. Um, I don't know how I feel about getting under this while it's running in gear. I don't know if it's fixed, but it's got more fluid in it. Okay. So I gotta get all this transmission fluid and sweat off me. Oh, it's in my eyes. Yep. Oh, yeah. it's open in there, so. Okay. We're all fixed. It was that easy. I need a quarter and a half. And at this point, literally nothing can go wrong. If you've never had to wash ATF fluid out of your hair in an auto parts bathroom, I don't hear nothing from you. You haven't lived. So Giffen caught up to us on a technicality. <laughs> On a technicality, yeah, well technically we broke down. So. I think it's technically a mechanical. <laughs> yeah, that was a mechanical. We almost had a mechanical tap out, but he's gonna give us a head start and let us try again. Get it. Man, I love that. It's like covered in sweat and ATF fluid, miserable, getting rust in your eyes. But we're moving again. Like, like how much can you suffer? And that's not a rhetorical question. That's like a challenge. Like I'm determined to find out how much I can suffer. I think we're gonna make it, no problem. Yeah, literally, no problem, of course. It feels a lot better. I mean, it's not like before. The last time we got on the highway, I was having a hard time getting up to speed. And now it seems to be grabbing all right.
30 second update on what happened what's new with the car so pretty much she's all new from the firewall <laughs> forward all new frame two by three square tubing uh p-pump 12 valve got uh 4000 governor springs fuel plate mod upgraded turbo nv 4500 five speed a cast iron 205 transfer case sweet <laughs> and a uh, Dana S135 rear with a 488 gear. Cool, so less chatter. Oh, a lot less. You built a bad machine, Sean Cross. Thank you. Hey, let's road trip this one. It's a whole lot nicer. <laughs> a lot less breakdowns. So you said you got coil packs for, well, at this point now it's Stomper because we stole Stomper's coil packs and put them on this Corvette truck. Okay. Where are the Corvette, oh, where are the coil packs? Uh, about 10, 15 minutes from here. Okay, do you wanna, does it make sense to ride together or do I, should I just follow you? Uh, just follow me. All right, let's go. Sweet. Easy. One. One down. Thanks, Sean Cross. Well, I think we've been broke down once before, so yeah. it's the least we can do. Sean, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your friendship. I'm gonna hit the road. The sun's going down. I got a lot of driving to do. Yeah, get back on the road. We finally made it to Dallas in the morning. We made it to Holly's LS Vest, Texas. Putting this beautiful six inch serpentine pulley on this radial dynamic CVX pump, which is going to be giving us about 1800 PSI of pressure in stomper so that we can power front and rear steer at the same time. Um, it's also gonna be giving us about six gallons per minute, which is a pretty good flow rate in the world of power steering. So pressure and gallons per minute comparison compared to what was in there. Oh, that old stock P-Pump was probably giving us about two, maybe two and a half gallons per minute if we were lucky, and probably about 1,200 PSI. That's if it was good, and we've been through 12 of them. <laughs> <laughs> and we've actually had Eric out here with Radio Dynamics to test it, and at one point it was making 300 PSI, so it was useless. So this is the patented Radial Dynamics Vortex Reservoir, and what this does is it's going to set up the best fluid conditions for the new power steering pump. So as the fluid comes back into the system, returning from the steering box or from your rack and pinion, that fluid is gonna spin around here in the lower half of the reservoir. It's gonna separate and remove any gas bubbles. Those are gonna get shot straight up to the top of the reservoir, and then your nice clean oil is gonna go back out to the pump. And then special cap too. Special cap, radiator cap. In case you lose it or forget it, you can go down to the parts store and grab another one. But yeah, as the fluid heats up and expands, this is gonna build 10 PSI in the reservoir, so that also helps reduce cavitation in the pump. Right, because that lowers the boiling point, or right. raises the boiling point. Raises. Yes. Yep. <laughs> awesome, sick. The Radial Dynamics Vortex Reservoir is gonna spin the fluid and separate the air from the fluid in the same way that Stomper separates my blood cells from a plasma. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think you've got it. <laughs> Science. One of the main reasons that Stomper exists was to develop this four-wheel drive active rear steer system with the help of Vague Industries. And what this system does is we're using position sensors on both the front and rear axles and feeding those signals back to a control module that's actively monitoring the front steering position as Josh steers the steering wheel and, and moves that those front tires back and forth. That control module is going to be actively steering the rear to either counter steer or crab steer, depending on what Josh wants it to do. Now, in emergency cases, he can manually override. Um, we're using a special rear steer valve, so it gives us an unlimited array of options that we can use to control how this thing works. Um, we even have speed sensitive steering that's built in here, so above certain speed thresholds, we can change how that rear steer operates, which makes this unlike any other rear steer system on the market. So with that speed sensitive steering, what this system is doing is at low speeds, the rear steer is more active. You're gonna feel it more. So especially if you're driving around a parking lot or doing low speed stunts, you're really getting that rear to swing around. And as the speed increases, that steering becomes less and less active 
uh, just because of the fact that you don't want it to respond so quickly. And then once you get above a certain threshold, so for instance, if you're driving on the highway, it will actually crab steer so that it's numbing down the steering. It's more like you're changing lanes parallel to the direction of travel. All of that is adjustable right on the dash with a couple of knobs. So normally we're using these goat built mounting brackets, which are in stock at Radial Dynamics, by the way, and they work great unless you shove your motor three inches forward and you've got a bunch of tubes where all the bolts come out. What a bozo! <laughs> so we have to kind of take everything apart just to get the steering pump in and out, <clears throat> thanks to uh, Vague Industries motor placement. Yeah, you can thank the engineer over there. <laughs> <laughs> that guy sucks. <laughs> Okay, so Gibbons transmission won't hold any load. We basically had to idle 1,800 miles here. Um, so he can't actually compete in anything and I don't want to risk blowing this thing up for nothing. So I kind of already won by default. I'm just going to do some burnouts here today. But <laughs> the, the head members of Holly Performance told me that I'm not allowed to do burnouts in Stomper because it's extremely dangerous and they were very concerned for my health when we did it in Vegas uh, a couple months ago. Unless I can come up with a remote ignition interrupting system. So Chris and I went to Tractor Supply and grabbed uh, a couple of secret components and we're gonna put this all together so that we can put a remote in the hands of the president of Holly and when he thinks I'm out of control, he can just hit the button and it kills the truck. Which hopefully that doesn't make it more dangerous, but that's what they want. This is awesome, I just did a dry run of this. Yes. Good. Sick. <laughs> um, yeah, so we need to be able to shut Stomper off at any time. Um, it's been requested kindly. So what we did is I ran out to Tractor Supply and I picked up a Tractor Supply winch controller, which comes with this and not those bare ends on it. And we cut the connectors off and we're gonna wire the ignition to the PCM into a relay so that anytime you push the inner out on this it energizes the relay and disconnects voltage to the pcm which will cause the truck to shut off science in theory science it'll work the first time it's gonna work every time oh can i have some swedish fish yes if we weren't on camera i'd say no <laughs> love you <laughs> jeremy you ready for the adventure all the way to california for the hottest part of the trip yeah. it was like 114 on the way here yeah it'll be great no ac you don't need it hey no voltage see it so let it off so we got 12 volts he pushes the button we have zero volts we have an interrupter that's with the in and out so yeah i hooked it up to both you can get with this or you can get with that cool so now where's this go where's what go Oh, this spaghetti? In the spaghetti. <laughs> Gotta find the best place to steal this ignition wire, which I think is going to be right here. This is the ignition wire. Yeah. Right there. Nice and serviceable. All right, fire up. Contact. hey -o. hey -o. Yay. That's awesome. That is, right? That is way too nice. That's... <laughs> Pack that up some more. <laughs> Do that again. Do that. Never gonna do it from way over there. I'm kind of concerned. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Go all the way down to the boost district and see if you can shut it off from down there. Sweet. Wow. Sweet. That's really far away. Remote ignition interrupter. Perfect. Check. <laughs> Tractor Supply carries remote ignition interrupters. If you're ever required to install one before you're allowed to do a burnout contest with everybody else, I'm gonna consider this a feather in the hat. Because, like, I'm getting rules made about me because I'm too out of control. So apparently all the intercooler lines are dry rotted and leak, so my intercooler reservoir is empty. And that's why I've got Jeremy here filling it up. Oh yeah. Well, I think it's filling up. We don't actually know. Because the hose is kind of leaking pretty bad, but... Right now, our intercooler air-to-water pump is not pumping. So we are chasing wires, trying to figure out which part of this system doesn't work right now. Hopefully it's not the pump. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> 
being smoked in the face by the line. Why is that not attached to anything? <laughs> <laughs> Turbo's really warm. Oh, sorry, I was just burning myself. Is it in? Yeah, it's in. It's in. It's in. Can you explain what just happened? Hopefully, it was just a blown fuse and it doesn't instantly blow again. Uh, nope. Did it blow it again? Oh, hot. No, it didn't. Okay. Cool. So maybe the pump switch is off. You know, that's a possibility. We went to go fill the intercooler uh, with water. It's there to water, took fresh water out of here. Went to go fire up the truck and now the intercooler water pump is not pumping water anymore. Um, so we started diving down that rabbit hole a little bit, found a blown fuse, took the relay out, checked the relay, it's kind of swollen, but seems fine. Then we jumped the pump to the fuse and it blew the fuse again. And then we tried just giving it power and now nothing works um, for the intercooler. So that's a problem. It's extra dry in here. Not good. So we pulled the uh, we pulled the, the back cover off the pump to get to the inside to try to free up the electrical side of the motor, thinking it would, might be seized because you turn the switch and you kind of hear it katunk katunk. So we popped this cover off, which has no ring on it, which seals the actual veins of the pump, and it's uh, completely dry inside. There's no water in it, but there's water in the system. So while that cover's off, should we try to spin it? Yeah, with my face right here, 100. <laughs> percent Turn it on. It's hot. <laughs> Yep. Switches in go mode, so ready? Yep. Perfect. Except the water part. <laughs> why? Why am I not wet still? Yeah. How come there's no water? I'm not wet. That's a new problem. How come there's no water? It does spin though. It does spin. Uh, all right. Can we? Why is there no water? The wire is now hot. There we go. I got water in there. Yep. It's leaking. Yeah, yep. that's normal. Yeah, that's normal. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's how you cheat and you move the tires, right? I knew you guys were shysters. I just tuck this back up in here and uh, away we go. I don't think it's gonna last long. It'll last long enough to make those probably. I'd probably take like a quarter inch off. And one off. Yo oh yeah, baby. She cold. Nailed uh, it. That took the heat right out of it. That's awesome. Yeah. What's this? Yeah, it's your uh, kill switch, isn't it? Yeah. Remote ignition interrupter. Oh, <laughs> Perfect. It's awesome. Yep. You uh, just try not to stand still too long if you're doing a cyclone. Okay. Just so we don't burn a hole in the asphalt. You it, got did, it. it didn't happen last time out west. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was trying to do that. And then do you have a kill switch? I've got a remote ignition interrupter. Okay. okay. I didn't even so do that at once you're driving, the only thing we got to do is hit what? Off or out? You, you got to hit either yeah, out like or in. Just, just got to hold it until it dies. Either one? Either one. It doesn't matter. Okay. So if it's not dying on end, then hit out? No, 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 no. They'll, they'll, they will both kill it. The on off yep. is for the controller to turn it. So if you. So I got to turn this on first. Yeah, hold that. You can see a little red light. No. Hold the, hold the button. Yep. Okay. So, so now the controller's on. And then just hold that. Yep. Okay. Cool. That's all I need to know. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. He's so damn crazy. I got a freaking kill switch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's got my switch. You got the switch? I want the switch. <laughs> I don't control the switch. <laughs> I love that, like, I've already won I'm, by I'm, default. I'm controlling the Josh stopper. Just by the fact that there's a rule made based on my out of controlness means that I won by default. Yeah. I don't know if you should be proud of that. <laughs> it's, it's a feather in my cap no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, you going, you riding shotgun? No. Are you a freaking idiot? Well, well going yes. Back. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Come on. Yeah. Come on, Brandier. Did you know that we're driving that to California on Monday? No, I didn't know. Like on the street, not trailer, no. The fastest I've gone is maybe 40 and it's terrifying. 
<laughs> so you're only gonna go 40 the whole way from here to California? I don't know. It depends on how big my balls get. Dude. <laughs> are you gonna lock this? You gonna lock the rear out where it's just straight? I don't know. There's cool features that the rear steer does. So I might leave it on. Will you go 50 or 60? Well, it actually initiates a underdriven crab walk at higher speeds, so it like nervous, numbs man. the steering. You really make me nervous. I got a show called Death Wish. <laughs> don't have to make it come through. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where the line is till you cross it, though. Yeah, and then you're dead, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> what a good group of guys to die with, though. True that. You don't go down, go down with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I gotta get ready. I'm going to do burnouts. Oh, he was getting ready to hit every wall here. Yeah. 